Greetings fellow detectives, Wizard Kitten 774 here, bringing you Nancy Drew game commentary, clues, and cookies. Today we are starting off our walkthrough for Nancy Drew's Secret of the Scarlet Hand, the sixth mystery in the Nancy Drew series. It takes place in Washington, D.C. and kind of focuses on Maya culture at a museum. So let's get started. Welcome it's pretty to cool my game. latest case. Secret of the Scarlet Hand. Yeah, yeah, we know Nancy. To start playing, so you can do junior or junior senior. Or senior Dear We're gonna Dad, do senior. greetings from the new deputy curator at Beecho Museum in Washington, D.C. I miss you, by the way. How's Africa? I sure hope this letter reaches you in Ouagadougou before you move on to Nairobi. So I got the internship. Your old friend Franklin Rose was awfully nice to submit my name to the rest of the members of the museum's board of directors. What an opportunity while I'm in between cases. As you probably know, the museum specializes in ancient Maya culture. My supervisor is going to be Joanna Riggs, a well-known archaeologist. Maybe you've seen her name in the news recently, in conjunction with the discovery of a strange Maya monolith. Apparently, it's created quite a buzz among experts in the field. Well, Beach Hill plans to feature the monolith in an upcoming exhibition. Just imagine, this artifact has been buried for hundreds of years, and now it's going to be unveiled to the public for the first time. The museum is short-staffed at the moment, and they're expecting such a huge turnout that they've closed their doors to prepare. I can hardly wait to dig into this exciting project and learn how archaeologists and historians solve the mysteries of ancient cultures. I'll keep you posted. Love, Nancy. Nancy Drew, I presume. I'm Joanna Riggs. Welcome to Beach Hill. I was just checking the lock on this display case. This is one of the museum's most treasured pieces, a carving of King Pakal. Who was King Pakal? Pakal assumed the throne at age 12. Can you imagine? That was 615 AD. He ruled for 68 years at the height of the Maya civilization. Is that jade? Yes, the Maya loved jade and used it for many of their carvings. There isn't another piece like this in the world, and it's priceless, which means I practically had to sell my own grandmother to get it. How did the museum acquire it? Leave it to Taylor Sinclair. He's a wizard when it comes to these deals. You'll meet him later. Now then, Nancy, you're coming on board at a critical time for Beach Hill. An exhibit of this caliber is not kid stuff. Franklin Rose assures me you're a real trooper, and I hope he's right because I'm not here to babysit. I don't care who your father is. If there's one thing I've learned from my father, it's the value of hard work. Just tell me where to start. There's a list of tasks for you in the lab. Once you've knocked those off, we'll regroup. Where's the rest of the staff around here? We've had to make some, uh, budget cutbacks, so we'll be relying heavily on our volunteer staff. Namely, you. <laughs> Besides Henrik and me, the only people who will be around to pester you are Taylor Sinclair, my ace art dealer, and Alejandro Del Rio, attaché to the Mexican consulate and executive thorn in my side. Tell me more about Alejandro Del Rio. Ugh, wouldn't you rather hear about the monolith? It's a massive pillar of stone, nearly 1,500 years old with Maya glyphs carved into it. We've installed it in the garden. Wait until you see it. How do you know it's 1,500 years old? According to Henrik, the monolith was made at the special request of King Pakal himself, but we don't know what its purpose was. Who's Henrik? Henrik Vanderhoon, world-renowned expert in Maya hieroglyphics. He's the latest addition to the Beach Hill Brain Trust. I told him I don't even want to see his pointy Vander head till he's got a translation on that monolith. Any last advice before I get down to business? Semper ubi sabubi. I don't understand that advice. That doesn't help me much. So that is Joanna, Joanna Riggs, she's our supervisor, she works here at the museum. We are interning at Beach Hill, Beach Hill Museum, as Nancy said in her letter. Some cool Maya artifacts in Joanna's office here. What else do we got? A couple magazines, Art in the Americas. An interview with Prudence Rutherford. Just a cookie for future games. Prudence Rutherford is a name that comes up more than once in Danger by Design and in The Phantom of Venice as well. 
How did a New York Society woman like yourself end up in Topeka, Kansas? Uh, da -da, we don't really need to read this. Ooh, it is interesting, though, that jade carving looks a lot like the one that Joanna was showing Nancy. Coincidence? I think not. Topeka Commission for the Arts. How cultured. How cultured. Sure. Oh, yeah, and there's a close-up of the jade carving. Yeah. That's a little bit of a... Something to store away in the old noggin while we start some snooping around here. Great Plaza of Tikal in Guatemala. That would be a cool place to see. Alright, let's go start exploring the museum a little bit. So this is the entryway to the museum. You can see... That's, the, that's Joanna's office. You can look at the donors. Got some fun names here. Let's see... Any cookie names? Topeka Commission for the Arts. That's the organization Prudence Rutherford works for. So we know of that one. Um, ND Fan123. One of the Nancy Drew fans. Let's see, who else do we got? Marquis Del Falcone. Nicholas Falcone was one of our characters in Nancy Drew the Final Scene, the last game we played. Punchy LaRue, that will come up in Nancy Drew Phantom of Venice. Otherwise, I think those are the only ones. Those are the front doors. This is something that we need to get, an addenda to the Palenque Monolith Loan Contract. We need to bring this to Alejandro. It's one of the things on the to-do list that Joanna mentioned for us. We'll see that in a bit. The knob is missing. The knob is missing, and we can't use just this knob. That would be ridiculous, Nancy. What we got in this drawer? Finding the Maya. B. Mayan glyph for road. So these glyphs are going to be important to remember. Try to... You can write those down if you have your detective notebook. Otherwise, you can... I guess remember them. And this game is super interesting because you can actually read at all of the exhibits. Ooh, I'm gonna, just gonna take that. I'm just gonna take things from the exhibits because that's totally appropriate, right? It's totally okay. But the cool thing about this game is that you can actually like, explore the museum like you are in a museum. You can read all of the things in all of the exhibits. I'm not going to do it right now because it takes a long time. But ooh, another, that's the uh, glyph for black, ek. Looks like ink, which I think is what it says on there is where it came from. Some cool vases. You never know what things are going to be important for Nancy to see, so it's always a good idea to just kind of really look over things. Pakal, whose name translates to shield. Yeah, definitely important to read about Pakal. He's, he's the one who has the jade carving. Pakal, whose name translates to shield, was born in 603 CE and ascended the throne in 615 CE at the age of 12. Considered both a priest, king, and a military ruler, Pakal claimed divine descent and ruled the great Maya city-state of Palenque for 68 years until his death in 683 CE. The 11th ruler of Palenque, Pakal was responsible for the majority of the city's construction. His ancestry and accomplishments are immortalized in Palenque's temples and palaces, especially the Temple of the Inscriptions, which was the primary sacred site in Palenque and later the shrine for Pakal's tomb. Pakal was buried wearing the jade death mask you see here. The mask was meant to distinguish Pakal as royalty even in the afterlife. Much of what we know about King Pakal and the Maya civilization over which he presided has been pieced together by translating the glyphic inscriptions on his tomb. There's his death mask. Yeah, Pakal is definitely the Mayan king that the game focuses on. There's the jade carving that Joanna was fawning over earlier. Some cool stuff. Maya gods. They were not monotheistic, they were polytheistic. Those are some of the gods. Like Yum Cox, the jaguar god. Oh no, the corn god. The jaguar god Zablanque and the sun god Ahaukin. Calendar stones. Tolkien. 
calendar stones. Mayan customs. Yeah, it's some interesting customs. Like the uh, body shaping devices. Like they would purposely try to get children to have crossed eyes and they would try to um, crush the foreheads in so they would be flatter. It's considered um, beautiful in Mayan culture, according to this game. I'm assuming they did pretty good research and there's actually true things. Maya number system. I think we can actually, yeah, Just we can look at the Maya number tile. system. Oh, we have one of the tiles. But we're missing another one. We'll have to look into that. There's another glyph. The logograph for ink. Oh, so this is the logograph for ink. I see. Alright. I think we will continue exploring in our next video, maybe meet a couple of people. So I will see you then, fellow detectives.